Hello and welcome back to Daniel, the study that we've been going through for the past couple of days. Today we're going to be in chapter 3, so if you would just go ahead, grab your Bible, make sure that you go ahead and read the entire chapter. One of the things that I like to do while I study, I like to read it first once and then read it a second time and highlight, underline. I always have a notebook to take notes. Um, so go ahead, however it is that you're going to do that, take your time, Daniel chapter 3, I'll see you in a couple minutes. Daniel chapter 3. I love this chapter because it's a little bit different. You have Daniel as the narrator or the author. And one of the cool things that I came across, one of the information, is that Daniel's actually written in two separate languages, uh, Hebrew and Aramaic. And I tried to look up a lot of commentary on it, but for some reason, nobody really knows why Daniel did this. I guess my own thoughts could be that he was trained in two different lands, essentially. Um, it said that God gave him extra wisdom as we read in Daniel chapter 1, but either way I thought that was really interesting because it's unlike other chapters in the Bible. He wrote it in two separate dialects. Um, but anyways, going into this, I started to realize also that this king, Nebuchadnezzar, he was an extremely self-absorbed human being. We open up with at the very beginning and it talks about how the king created this image made out of gold and it's this huge thing and he instructs all of the people. It says that he asked, actually I wouldn't say he asked, he basically told the people in his land or whatever it is that you want to call it. It says that he told the satraps, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, judges, magistrates, and all the rulers. It says that he instructed them to bow down to this idol. And I thought it was kind of interesting because you read that and you think, wow, what an egotistical maniac. But when you really break it down, I think that a lot of us have image issues. And what I mean by that is we live in an age today where our image is so important to us the way we look the way we speak the way that we portray ourselves to other people and i think that we without realizing it can fall into the trap of portraying ourselves to be more or greater than we are or exaggerating some of our accomplishments so that we get noticed hoping that that person of status or maybe that wealthy person or the popular person or that group of friends that you really want to be friends with, or maybe it's the cool mom's club. I know that sounds silly, but I think we're all guilty of expecting praise and acknowledgement. And when we don't get that, we pout. It's like, man, I did all of these things and that person didn't even notice me or they didn't give me a pat on the back. And we want other people to praise us. And it might be something as simple as we post something on social media and there we are waiting. How many likes did I get? Are we doing it um, so that our egos are elevated so that other people are gonna like us or are we posting an encouraging verse or a word or something so that we're actually genuinely hoping to encourage? Now maybe we are, maybe we are putting something out there and we're hoping, man, I, I, I know this is silly, but sometimes I've been guilty of it. I'm having a bad day and it's just like you want your ego fluffed a little bit. And when I was reading this, I thought it was funny because like I said, you read that and you're like, I would never make a statue out of myself. But without realizing it, we do. We care so much about our image. And that's why we have in society today, we have all of these things that enhance our look. We have surgeries, we have creams, we have all of these magic pills and not to say that there's anything wrong with wanting to be your best, but the problem is and I think the right way is when we check our hearts is to see when I'm not getting noticed, how do I feel? Do I get angry like that king? Do I become frustrated and obviously we're not going to throw anyone into a fire, but essentially we like 
they burn us, right? We feel burned because we didn't get that acknowledgement. And I just have this thing lately where I feel like God's been speaking to me. And I wanted to take you to a verse because this is what God's word says in Mark chapter 10, verse 42 through 45. Um, it says that Jesus said to them, you know that those who are recognized as rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them and their great men exercise authority, but it is not so among you, but whoever wishes to become great among you shall be your servant and whoever wishes to be first among you shall be slave of all. It's extremely countercultural. I also want to take you to Luke 9, 24 through 25. Have my little bookmarks here but sometimes they get lost and that's okay um as i was kind of going through these verses i laughed because i don't ever realize how many times god is constantly reminding us the importance of being a servant and that it's not about us and yet here we are living in this age where it's become all about us so it says in Luke 9, 24 through 25, For whoever wishes to save his life shall lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake, he is the one who will save it. For what is a man profited if he gains the whole world and loses himself? And I think that we do. We work so hard to get the degree we work so hard to get noticed we work so hard to strive to get the big house and all of these things in in themselves are not bad but when we do it at the expense of losing our dignity or losing our integrity as we've been talking about this throughout daniel or as we do it at the expense of other people and we do it essentially for the status we're going to feel left empty every single time because we're not meant to try to please the world. We're meant and we're here for God's purpose. And lastly, the thing that really, really, and this is one of the things that when you read this chapter, you see these three young men, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They essentially said, no matter what, no matter what image, no matter what status, again, they were brought up with Daniel when he was brought up as one of the king's higher men and you have all of these assembly men or whatever it is that you call them at that time that goes from greatest to least and you get to these young guys and they're like we don't care about the status what we care about is our God and it wasn't um, anything other than the heart of worship for them, they refuse to worship anything except for their God. And what was so profound in this, and it's one of the most famous things in scripture, they said, we're not going to bow down to this image. We're not going to bow down to what the world says. We're not going to bow down and say that I'm going to do what you're asking me to do because one, this is our God and this is who we serve. They were going to get thrown into the fire, you guys. They they literally probably had the fire just right there blazing. You know when you're up and against a, a fire pit and you get too close and you just feel it and you're, it's hot, right? But they had this fire and they knew that if they didn't bow down, they were going to get thrown in. And they said, even if you don't, God. They basically told King Nebuchadnezzar to kick rocks. They said, even if our God doesn't, we're still not going to bow down to you because we know that our God is the only true God and he's the one that needs to be worshipped. I wanted to leave you guys with this because we're all guilty of it sometimes, especially when we're feeling insecure or whatever it is, for whatever reason that we do the things we do. I just want to remind you guys that God is the one who gives you these gifts and talents. He's the one that's can satisfy you he's the only one that can bring you that peace and that joy and essentially whatever it is that you're looking for i love you so much i hope that you join me tomorrow as we jump into chapter four you're an amazing soul i'm praying for you if you need anything reach out make sure you hit the subscribe button and i'll see you soon talk to you later